Welcome to another edition of Midweek Moment. My name is Minister Zanetta Dabney, and I am so excited to be your host for this month's special edition. We are now a year from the premiere of Financial Foundations, a financial literacy workshop that was hosted over six sessions where financial professionals, teachers, and experts presented on an array of topics, which included key financial topics such as budget basics, credit care, borrower's burden, mastering your money, estate essentials, and retirement ready. Now, a year later, we are here still navigating COVID-19 and uncertain times, yet wanted to revisit key topics and lessons learned from our keynote speakers. The knowledge and information presented was rich and transferable, but who are some of these keynotes and how have they navigated these tumultuous times? This is our third week, believe it or not, recapping on Financial Foundations. On last week, we revisited our keynote speaker, Melanie Stubbs, who spoke on Retirement Ready last year, and we got to know her and her inspiration in becoming a financial advisor. This week, we welcome back one of our keynote speakers that presented on Mastering Your Money, David Bryant. One of David's passions is financial literacy to enhance his ability to help people better understand and manage the varied aspects of their finances. David obtained insurance and investment licenses and established his own business focus on providing practical advice and tools to address a wide range of financial and retirement concerns. Over the past 23 plus years, David's employment responsibilities have included supervising the issuance of over 5.5 billion, that's billion in bonds used to build and renovate schools, supervising an investment portfolio that averaged 1 billion, teaching personal finance at university level classes, seminars, community workshops, associations, events, and volunteer community service events. He also previously worked as a financial advisor, investment banker, and as a system business consultant. David reached his MBA from the University of Chicago in finance slash marketing and his BA from Michigan State University where he majored in economics, computer science. We would love to welcome to the Midweek virtual platform today, David Bryant. Welcome, David. Brother, thank you for having me back. It's good to see you again. and good to be back in uh, close contact with South Suburban Missionary Baptist as well. Yes, we are so pleased to have you back as well, David. I remember last year, your presentation was transformational for many. You broke down the very key elements of what it means to master your money. Um, I remember the intros. I remember some of the acronyms that you use. It was quite me. One of one of our, our greatest uh, presentations that we've had today. So we thank you so much for being back here on the Financial Foundation's virtual platform and particularly coming to be one of our interviewees for Midweek Moment. So today, David, I do have a few questions for you. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, we're wanting to get to know you, right? Um, we obviously know your work. We know your passions. We know some of the things that you have done. Your bio speaks very well 
well to some of the accomplishments and milestones that you've met uh, professionally, but who are you, right? How did you get started? Some of the questions that we're looking for today is just trying to dig deeper into your history around your financial foundation journey as well. So our first question on today is, when did you decide to focus primarily on financial independence and health? Okay. Well, I think that uh, God, as you know, has a plan for us. And um, before I even came to know him as my savior, he was working in my life and kind of leading me along. Most of my education undergrad was focused on economics and finance. And I've always kind of liked business. And I've also always had a desire to be of service. So I spent most of my working here working at various governmental agencies. But that was before I even came to know the Lord. After I came to know him, he began to focus and fine tune. One thing he told me was that I should serve. I remember when I first that God saved and I felt the Lord calling me to serve. I said, what should I do? He said, well, do the next thing that people ask you to do. And somebody asked me to sing in the choir and I cannot sing. I cannot <laughs> sing. And I think it was a test of faithfulness to see if I would just do the next thing somebody asked me to do. And the next thing after that they asked me to do was to work in the financial ministry at the church. And that combined with my just love of finance and my education as well. And there I began to see some of the issues that people were having with um, mastering their money. I didn't call it that at that time, but uh, some of the issues that they were having with just uh, coming to to, uh, grips and to being good financial stewards of their resources. And this is an African-American church. It was an African-American community. most of my schools were kind of bigger general state schools. Mm-hmm. And so they had, they had different communities there. So I was able to bring some of the things that I had learned in those environments and working in government and using it um, at the church. And that's kind of how, how my, my passion for finance in general, my passion for understanding economics got focused into helping people and, and small businesses do better with their own personal and business finances. And that's kind of how it kicked off. So I'm smiling uh, truly from ear to ear because you said a few things in in your uh, response here. I think one of the things that I heard was around this idea of call, right? So God called you to this. And I think that that's such a powerful statement when you talk about understanding what your calling your purpose is, particularly on this earth during this time. Right. So one of the things I understand about uh, your calling your purpose is just knowing when to say yes, right? Um, I think it's this idea of saying yes to God in whatever form and whatever way can be challenging, right? It's not always easy, but I just acknowledge and I honor the fact that you heard a call from God and you took the initiative. And I was also laughing when you said that your first thought was the choir, right? Because I think that that's everyone, uh, everyone's initiation to church, right? Um, It's the easiest way, whether you can sing or not, right? I think it's the easiest place to begin because it's a community. Um, It's a community of people where you get to know people. There's a lot of socialization, right? And most importantly, you get to sing to the glory of God. Even if you can't sing, right? Um, You just are literally in the midst. So I like the idea that you started there. And from there, you know, you were able to kind of gain your footing and then branch into uh, Mm -hmm. financial foundations. And so I believe that's just such a transformational story. And the idea, again, of call and purpose for me, um, is such a powerful statement, definitely for sure. Just speaking about call particularly, do you feel that um, this is something that God has called you to, to continue to do for the rest of your life? Or do you feel that God is calling you to kind of branch out into other areas when it comes to financial foundations? What can you speak to a little bit more when it comes to that call and that purpose? And how are you exercising that? Well, so I think it has the, the call was kind of fine tuned. Initially, it was more just instructional. I mean, I like to teach. So I would teach people and work with them just to help them to understand. Like when we did the series, my acronym, one of the acronyms was ready, responsibly evaluating and developing yourself. So I would kind of focus more so on that. And I would think we got to a good place where they were understanding and desirous of making change. And then I would just leave them there. And then I would talk to them months or a year later and say, how did things go? Did you implement these changes? And many of them didn't because they needed somebody to take the next step with them. And that's when Mm -hmm. I decided to start my own business, to get licensed and things like that. So I could not only give people advice, but I could also, where it made sense for them and help them achieve their goals, 
actually give them more direction and guidance and things that they could practically do to make uh, to make changes. And that has been kind of the fulfillment of the call. I, I believe you serve until you can't serve anymore. Mm. So my intention is to serve until the, the Lord comes back or until he makes it be unable to do this type of service and then he gives me something else to do. No, this is, I'm grateful to have a sense of call of, uh, of what I'm supposed to do. I'm sure that you know that when you do it, you can endure the, the rejection you sometimes get. You can endure mm -hmm. uh, pouring your heart out and helping somebody to establish something and then them going and doing it with somebody else. You can handle those types of things because you're, you're basically doing what the Lord called you to do. And that gives you peace in the midst of whatever circumstances you, you, you find it. And I would like to be in the center of that peace regardless you know so yeah i think this is what he asked me to do i haven't gotten another call yet so i'm gonna stick to it <laughs> no i love that you said something that was very um it caught my ear when you mentioned this idea of practicality within your approach um and just bridging that with the call especially when we talk about um the call to you know, help others, right? And the call to minister to others. We know that Jesus was literally one of the most practical people, right? He, he taught in parables to simplify things, right? So that it was palatable for people. And I believe that that's what you're doing even in your business. You have this very practical, very tangible approach for people to really grasp on so that, or grasp too, so that once they hear, for example, the acronyms or the steps, they're very one, two, three, very basic. You break it down so that it's palatable so that anybody, right? Maybe even a child can actually understand it, digest it, and apply it. Um, so I do believe you are doing the work of God. So that is amazing, David. Um, <laughs> moving to our second question here. What inspired you to extend your knowledge to others to educate them about financial foundations? Yeah. I mean, you, you see people and you see them in situations and circumstances. You hear stories about things and, and you think that if they would have done this, then they would have had a better outcome. If they would have done this, they would have had a better outcome. And, and I asked myself, well, why? Why wouldn't they want a better outcome? And everybody does. It's just that some people were not exposed. Um, finance is not a, a, a subject that's really focused on and bringing people up historically in the past. And then the African, African American community having less finances in general means it, it, it kind of gets less of a, of a focus. Education gets more of a focus, but financial management hasn't. So when, when I, I see people, it just kind of, it, it just kind of impacts my heart. You know, if, if you're, when you're called to do a certain thing, you're kind of hypersensitive to that thing when you see it going on or you see it not being done. And so that's just kind of how it, 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 it kind of it impacted me. Just seeing people who could do better, who wanted to do better, and wanting to help them, uh, help them to do better. No, it's so good, and I think you know this has been a common thread throughout uh, our last two interviews as well. Especially seeing that you are, you know, a black professional, right? As were uh, Michelle and um, Melanie, um, our last two speakers, and the one thing that we continue to share. Um, and that we all resolve on in these discussions is that our community needs help, right? Um, especially considering the history of where we come from, how we were oppressed, right? How we did not have the opportunities as our counterparts or our majority counterparts. And so we find ourselves in a lot of circumstances and situations where the education and the knowledge of financial foundations and what that looks like, right? In a, in a healthy way was not presented to many of us coming up. And so having to then try to rewire, if you will, yeah. the way someone has been conditioned over so many generations of time and how that's been passed along is quite a task. It is a challenge. And so when you talk about navigating passion and then merging that with um, the challenges that you will face in trying to navigate passion and purpose, right. <laughs> I completely understand what you're speaking to here. Um, but it is something that our community has to continue to try and champion because the reality is until we're able to master our money, right, which is yeah. the this, this series that you spoke on, we won't be able to really move to that generational, uh, generational wealth or that next level when it comes to our finances. I know right now, currently, there's a huge boom of these, you know, uh, Gen Z 
who, and millennials who are saying, hey, I, I spoke about this again before, um, you know, we want to invest more. We want to understand what Bitcoin does. We want to understand what, you know, some of these programs are. We want to understand how to take our money and make it grow for us. We're trying to grow. We're trying to understand. But what I see in some context is we're skipping steps, right? We see people that are starting from one and trying to go to 100, but there is still two and 99, yeah. right? Between the to go through the middle. That's exactly, exactly right. right. And so uh, one of my sermon topics is actually the only way out is through, right? And All so right. for us to get out of, <laughs> Um, this financial um, pit that we do see ourselves um, and some of our families in, we have to go through. And so it's not this quick win or this easy win. And I think that sometimes we we can mistake that, right? And, and misread that and miscalculate that because the way that finances are being promoted today is if you do this, you'll get this, right? Or if you just do this and invest this, then your return will be this. I mean, it's all a gamble. It's a risk. Mm -hmm. I, I try to help people see that you need to be the best you that you can be financially where you are right now. You could grow forward in the future. And sometimes there's setbacks like COVID caused a lot of setbacks to people. But as long as you are trying to make the most of the resources that you have using the, the tools that are available to you, then you should be you're doing good. I mean, that's the best you can do. You, you can't guarantee an outcome. You cannot be your parents today because it took your parents 20 or 30 years to get there. You, to have the houses that they have, to have the cars that they have. And the financial environment has changed somewhat so that they had opportunities that that you guys are going to find harder uh, to come by, particularly as regards to uh, retirement. You know, that's mm -hmm. much more on you than it was on my uh, on my on my father. <laughs> and mm -hmm. even more so than it is on me, because I still have some of the benefits of the older defined benefit type systems. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree completely. Excellent. So, David, we have another question for you. Um, so as you talked about, I think you touched on this earlier, we are now uh, a year off from our six series workshop, Financial Foundations. We are also just a little over a year now from the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. And as we all know, as we are all living through it, this has been one of the most impactful times um, of our generations. And so what key financial advice have you established for your personal goals? And what financial advice during this time have you adjusted as as a result of COVID-19. Yeah, and I think another benefit of kind of starting my own business, do I do work with other companies that have insurance and investment type products uh, to get to, to offer to people, um, is that you need to be working for yourself. Your money needs to be working for you and then you need to be working for yourself. Even if you're in the context of having a regular job, be developing your skills, be making connections, be volunteering, be, be doing things that put you in uh, connections with other people such that you can grow and develop further. And I think the pandemic pushed us into an environment where you still need to do those things, but you need to do them more virtually. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a leaner time uh, business-wise. I think that people were more financially uncertain about what they can do, but it was a good time introspective-wise because people were more open to, okay, so what does this mean for my retirement? Mm -hmm. You know, you're in your, your 30s or your 40s, and it's good that you're thinking about your retirement, and you probably are thinking about it in a way that you would not have had not it been for the pandemic. So I was in, I would, was encouraging people, okay, this is a time when you can study. If if there's something about finance that's important to you that you don't know, one of my overall principles is you cannot afford to be ignorant. If you're mm -hmm. buying a car, you cannot afford to be ignorant about what's on that car application. If you're buying a mortgage, you cannot afford to be ignorant about the terms in your mortgage document. Hold off until you understand what it is that you're doing and what it is that you're, you're getting yourself into. So I would say to people, this is a time when you're, you're not out and about as much. The Internet's available. I'm available. And you can now come to have a better understanding of the things that are important to you. If, if retirement's important to you, if protecting your loved ones is important to you, if helping your grandkids is important to you, whatever it is, you can now, you have more time and resource to be more focused on it. So I, I was encouraging people to uh, to do that. I would do that in some, there's some things that I wanna know more about. You know, that when, when, you, when you get all these licenses they shotgun feeds you everything. So you're a, a, a jack of many trades, but I would like to be a master of the things that are most helpful to people as opposed to a jack of all things. 
So I myself kind of focus more on um, small business retirement plans. I focus more on helping people to manage their debt because now if you're in a situation where you lost your job, you couldn't pay your mortgage, you couldn't pay your rent, what are you gonna do when you come out of this and all the moratoriums and those things stop? How are you gonna, how are you gonna deal with it? Telling people to you know, face up to it, talk to your landlord, talk to people, try to let them know that you would pay if you could and try to put yourself in a, a position that when all of the, the moratorium stop, you you have a relationship. You can you you can do something uh, uh, to help yourself at that time. So I would try to help people to do that themselves, and I try to do that uh, myself as as well too. Did a lot of walking, a lot of solo bike riding <laughs> as well too. Um, there's less uh, people were more hesitant, and rightfully so, about doing stuff in person. So there's more uh, more virtual, which goes to being adaptive. You know, you have to try to adapt to what's going, uh, to, to, to what's in front of you now. Financially, uh, business-wise, employment-wise, you, you have to be flexible. So I think that those are some of the lessons that I've been trying to share with others and to put in practice, uh, in practice myself. So I've studied up on some subjects that I've been wondering about for a while and not had time to, um, not set aside the time to focus on deeply. Um, so those are, that's the kind of thing I've been doing. No, that's, I mean, I think that's right on target too when we talk about uh, flexibility and adaptability, two things that are required, um, particularly in a time such as this where we have never navigated this space. This yeah. is new for us, right? We don't understand what this is quite yet. Um, and I know initially we were saying this is the new normal, but now this is our normal, right? <laughs> we went from it being a new normal to it being just the normal. The normal is now where we are. Everything is virtual. Um, having to be able to maybe shift, as you said, some of the financial strategies that you had before. One thing that you know we've touched on uh, recurring week to week, and I think you also touched on it here, is this idea of debt management. But what does that look like in today's world, right? When you're in the midst of a pandemic, the idea is not to just throw all of your money to you know, try to reduce debt, but maybe you have to save a percentage of that, right? right? So maybe, you know, instead of trying to, again, pay off things and having little cash flow, the idea is to increase your cash flow, right? Um, and then, you know, pay things off at a more steady pace, right? So these are some of the things that we're seeing shift as a result. And flexibility is key because I think that what we've seen in this time is this idea that people tend to be a little bit more rigid with their money, right? Um, as I mentioned, yes, there needs to be an adaptation in your strategy, but at the same time, I think what we also have seen is some people saying, well, I don't want to spend anything. I was one of those people, right? Mm -hmm. I was saying, I'm not spending a dime. I don't want to do this. Maybe I'm not investing, but there are still some opportunities that you see. For example, right now, we know that the mortgage rates are extremely low, right? Mm -hmm. If you have the ability to invest, then do that, right? Or we see, for example, in other cases where um, there is an opportunity to maybe invest in, you know, stocks or um, uh, EFTs or uh, uh, index funds or whatever it is, right? And really get back some return. But you have to know that there's a strategy for that. And there needs to be some flexibility to understand what can I really afford here, right? right. And I think that that's the biggest question mark in the room. What can I afford, right? Can I afford to invest? Can I afford to pay down debt? Or should I simply wait and stack up my cash flow um, until I can navigate this space. So I think that you brought a, a lot of great points. We're going to have you teach a, a class the next time around because you <laughs> were really picking up well out, out, out the material. Yes. So so whatever a market in whatever market environment you have, you have some people who are being uh, advanced because of that. And there's some people who are declining. And mm -hmm. at the very least, you want to position your your thoughts, your resources, and your strategies so, such that you can hold steady. But you really want to be the, on the advancing end. You want to have money to buy a house when the interest rates are low, like they are now, even though demand is you know, high too. But you want to be able to take advantage. The, the market, even given the circumstances, has continued to rise. So I'm not saying that that will always be the case, but you want to be able to take advantage of those opportunities as well too. So having emergency savings, having a structured strategic approach like you're saying, you know, now might, might, now might not be the time to pay down something. 
Now may be the time to pay the minimum that you can so that you can have reserve until things get to be more stable. So mm -hmm. you have to be flexible and you, it, it helps if you have resources and a strategy in place such you can take advantage of the environment, whatever, whatever it may be. With the goal being that at least you just want to you want to be able to stay you know, where you are, not to be pulled down, and hopefully to uh, hopefully hopefully to go up as well too. Yes, David, I fully agree. So thank you so much for um, that response. So we have come to our last question uh, of this interview. We have enjoyed the time uh, with you, David, and again, we thank you so much for being on our virtual platform. So our last and final question is: What is the best piece of financial management advice you have found effective and relevant today? I guess is that I, I I like to say it nicely, but you you could just not afford to be unaware of your finances. You, you cannot allow yourself to think that you can't understand it or that you don't if it's something that you need to do financially. Mm -hmm. you, you you can't allow yourself not to understand the minimums uh, of investing because you have to invest to be able to take care of yourself and your family. You, you just otherwise. Um, generally can't do it, you know, unless you make just a huge amount of money, and most of us do not. So you have to be able to invest. Uh, you need a house to live in. So you have to be able to understand how much housing costs and you have to plan for it. You have to be able to uh, to figure it out. And I think the time of COVID has just made that all the more clear. I mean, you, 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 it just made it, if you, if you don't plan, if, if you don't have a reserve savings and then something like COVID happens, the situation can change very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you need to have a reserve. That's why you need to have so many months worth of savings set aside. Um, there are opportunities that come up, just like you talked about. If you always wanted to be a homeowner, then when rates get slow, that's the time you want to be able to take advantage of that uh, opportunity. You had a plan for your retirement, but, but COVID has impacted it. So now's the time to go back and look and see where you are now and to just to, to retool, to be aware and reasonable about where you are. Uh, now so that you can make a good plan um, um, going forward. So you cannot afford to say you don't understand your finances. I, I, I guess it's a, a broken record, but that's what I, I was talking to a client about an insurance policy. And I said, well, okay, so when you got this policy, what did you get it for? She might've had it for, for 15 years. She didn't really remember what she got it for. I said, okay. So why would you keep it now? Is this the best use of the money that's in this insurance policy for your goals, uh, your goals now? And she did say, well, that's why I'm talking to you, which I thought was, <laughs> was a good thing to be doing. Um, so I, I applauded that because at least she, she realized that something was wrong. She realized that she wanted to do something about it and that she didn't know, so she sought uh, help to do it. So that's one of the ways you get that question addressed. You reach out to people uh, such as myself, such as all well, the other panelists and participants in the series that uh, South Suburban Missionary Baptist is obviously very focused on helping people in this area. So um, use those resources, use those tools to educate yourself, to give you the opportunity of being in the best position that you possibly can, and then to take advantage of opportunities as they present themselves. I mean, the scripture says that there's nothing new under the sun. There's slight tweaks to finances, programs change, um, things uh, evolve slightly, but you need to save, you need to invest, you need to insure, you need to have a place to live, and you need to be able to provide for yourself when you can't work anymore. And those things are constant. So everybody should be working on developing and fine tuning. Now, as we come out of COVID, it's a good time to be revisiting your plans in those areas and to be fine tuning them uh, for the future, which is, uh, you were saying is the new, uh, the new normal. Um, no, I, I think it's such a, a great response. Um, I was just sitting here thinking about a few things as you were talking. One of the things you mentioned uh, was this idea of planning, right? Um, and since we're talking about scripture, the scripture tells us to write the vision, make it plain, right? And so when we are in a time such as this, writing down things, you know, sitting with your thoughts, sitting with some of the things that, you know, you have planned out for this year or last year that you weren't able to accomplish as a result of COVID, you know, how can you move that forward or how can you push those visions and dreams exactly. forward? Um, and so one of the things I think too, that we, somehow and or, or possibly even take for granted is this idea that COVID has allowed us 
to plan even more because we're not moving as much, right? We're not um, doing some of the activities. We don't have this idea of busy work, right? Um, most of us are just really at home and we're trying to really flush out exactly where we are from a financial perspective, but also it's given us the capacity to even save more because we're not spending as much. We don't, again, we're not going out and doing some of the same things that we used to do. So sitting down and writing a plan, right? Making it clear, outlining what are your goals and then setting, you know, milestones to achieve those goals, I think is something that you were alluding to. And it's something so critical. Um, something else that I heard you say in the sense of advice is you just got to do it right. In essence, that's really what you were saying. All encompassing is it's about actioning, right? Yeah. It's not just about, you know, I want to do this and saying it. Yes. You have to first dream every, every, uh, accomplishment starts with a dream. It starts with a thought, right? You have to definitely write down the plan, understand what it is that you desire, but then you have to put that to action. And I know that for some, because this is a challenging time, COVID has kind of crippled us mm -hmm. to say, well, do we really want to do this? Or, you know, we, we may become slowful at actioning. I can attest to that myself, right? That I had these, you know, grand dreams, you know, for 2020 and even for this year. And some of them I've been able to check off, but not many, right? Yeah. And that's because I've even found myself in places where I become a little slowful or discouraged because we are going through such a tumultuous time, but it really is about pushing yourself forward to say, how can I make this a reality? So that as your point, as you stated, when we come out of this, I'm in a better situation. So if it is something that you know I'm wanting to invest in, or if my end goal is maybe I can't afford to uh, take advantage of the low rates right now, let me plan out so that you know in a few months, yeah. Exactly. Right. At the end of the year, you know, maybe if I put myself on a six month plan or if I put myself on yeah. an eight month plan, you know, next year, I'll be able to kind of, you know, invest in that and, and find myself something that I want to do, whether that's getting a new home or investing in, you know, stocks or, or just simply saving. Right. Putting away a few dollars a month and just having, as you mentioned, more reserve, because that is also key. Um, we've talked about this again. This is a recurring theme throughout this series in that. Um, we never knew that this would impact us in the way that it did. So really having a reserve, having a cash flow, having savings is critical. Um, and so as we even navigate that, what is that plan for you? Mapping that out. Um, I like that you did not give a certain amount of months because every situation is relative, right? Um, one person's situations may be that the savings may be six months or it could be just a few months or it could be a whole year, whatever it is, map out. What is my income, right? What are my expenses? What do I need to save in the case that I lose my job for six to 12 months? What does that dollar amount look like? Plan that out, map that out and start working towards it. So I like that your advice really is all encompassing. It's about actioning, it's about planning um, and then just seeing it through. So um, I thought that was really good. Definitely. I think mastering, when you master something, it becomes a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you always get the best result with everything that you do, mm -hmm. but it does mean that you're making progress constantly and moving forward because you're applying the best that you know and that you're seeking more so that you can do better in the future. And that's what being a master of, of money is. You can't control how much you have, but you can, can, can control how you use what you have and work towards using it for the best accomplishment of your goals um, at, at the time, so. David, you just said something very powerful, actually. I love mm -hmm. what you just said, that mastering something um, ultimately becomes a lifestyle. So I really right. like that idea that mastering some, something becomes a lifestyle. And that's exactly where we need to be striving to be mastering our money so that it is literally intuitive. It is a lifestyle, budgeting, managing, control, discipline, all of those things that fall in line with that. When you talk about mastering something uh, should become a part of the lifestyle. So I really like that a lot. I thought that was a really great okay. point. Um, as always, it's such a pleasure talking to you and we appreciate the knowledge, the wealth, the knowledge that you have shared. Uh, so before we leave, if you can just let us know if someone wants to reach out to you, maybe understand a little bit more about their finances or tap into some of the services that you perform. Um, what is the best way to reach you? I am more than happy to help to just give advice or to help you make the next step from um, a strategy to an implementation, 
know, so that you, you're not only thinking about what you want to do, but now you actually want to take steps to do it. I, I'd be more than happy to help you do that. You can contact me at uh, 773-368-7223, my phone number, and um, david.bryant at wella, W-E-L-A, financial, F-I-N-A-N-C-I-A-L.com. I want to com compliment you guys on the, the series that was done last year. I really appreciate that. And one of the best that I have seen done in the 20 years that I've been doing this at various churches and places. And then your, con your commitment to continue to follow up on it is an example of mastering a topic. It's not just something that you did in the past. It's something that you're trying to establish as a lifestyle for people by keeping it out of front of them. And so I think that that's uh, great and that uh, you guys are blessing the Lord's people and whomever sees this because financial principles transcend, <laughs> they, 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 they transcend, uh, everyone is impacted by them. So uh, anybody who sees this could benefit from it. So I applaud you guys for it. And I, I'm grateful to be able to do this. Thank you, David. Truly, it was such a pleasure talking with you today. And we invite all of you that are watching virtually to come back on next week. This will be our last week where we revisit Financial Foundation's reboot uh, from prior year. And we're so excited about uh, what's in store even next week. It's a bit of a surprise. So just chime in make sure you are here Wednesdays at noon so you can check out and see exactly what we have in store for you. I don't know about you, but I have been so blessed, David, uh, just by hearing your words um, and just by this whole series. Uh, truly mastering money is something that we all need to continue to strive and do. Um, and I'm hoping that We'll hear more of you and you'll come back and grace us with your presence again in the near future. So thank you so much. Uh, may God's blessings overtake you and overtake your business and all that you are doing in this season. So thank you so much. Take care. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>